As disaster scenarios go, or anything that could cause an SHTF event for that matter, an EMP ranks high on my list. Uh, this isn't because of how likely it is or isn't, it's because of the devastation it would cause. Uh, because our dependence on electricity and just about everything being connected to the internet these days, an EMP could literally set us back 200 years or so. Unlike most disaster scenarios, signs of the initial event could be non-existent. Uh, there's no death toll or anything like that, meaning that people might not even know what's going on. You know when an earthquake happens, you know when a hurricane happens, you know when a nuclear bomb drops and all that stuff. Uh, but an EMP could just be a flash in the sky depending on where you are, you may not even see it. Most of these disaster scenarios, the danger happens right when the disaster happens, but with an EMP, it's kind of a cascading effect. So uh, the real danger starts after an EMP happens, and it can also last for a very long time. An EMP could mean power grid failure. It could mean hospitals would be affected. Uh, the supply lines would be severed. Banks would be shut down. It would mean critical infrastructure failures, nuclear meltdowns, not to mention the civil unrest, the looting, the rioting, the chaos, all of that stuff on a local and a national scale. Uh, basically, an EMP would be a bunch of different disaster scenarios all wrapped into one. And depending on the scale of the EMP and the effectiveness of the EMP strike, the problems could last years to come. And this would be a long-term SHTF event in every way we can possibly think of. It could mean no food, no water, no sewage, restricted medical help. Uh, people may be able to handle not being able to use the toilet or whatever for a while. But with no food, no water, and no medical help, uh, people become very unpredictable and very dangerous. Peter Pry stated a while back, the electric grid and other critical infrastructure is the technological and societal Achilles heel of the electronic civilization. While gridlock in Washington has prevented the federal government from protecting the national electric power infrastructure, threats to the grid and the survival of the American people from an EMP and other hazards are looming ever larger. Grid vulnerability to an EMP and other threats is now a clear and present danger. It's been estimated that around 90% of the population would die off within a year or so. Uh, the die-off would probably start almost immediately uh, and would last a long time to come. People who need constant medical attention, uh, people who are caught in the violence, uh, people like that would probably be the first to go, and then followed by malnutrition, uh, diseases, common medical conditions that are treatable today, but they wouldn't be in some sort of long-term grid down situation. Uh, that would all add to the die-off. After all of that, it's difficult to say when the rebuilding process would begin because it all depends on how, how things unfold following the EMP strike and why it happened and how it happened in the first place. What other countries were involved, whether they're good or bad, helping or hurting uh, in our situation. How effectively does the government or whatever the government is at that point, how, how, how effectively do they handle the situation? And what effects does it have on the economy in general? All of those are going to play a role in how things unfold uh, that year or two after something major like this happens. Eventually, though, the survivals will start pulling together and putting all the pieces back in place. At some point, society is going to start to rebuild. There's going to be communities that will form and the quote unquote new normal will begin. We would have sort of a jump start, I suppose, as long as we could get the electric grid up and running, at least in some places, because we do have this technology, we do have this equipment and everything, but we need to be able to use it. So we, it, it really depends. It's really questionable how long something like this would take and what it would look like. But one thing is for sure, it wouldn't look like it looks today. Uh, it would be a slow, long rebuilding process. Eventually it would get there, but... We just don't know how long. And that's why preparing for long-term stuff, not just having the food storage, but knowing how to grow your own food and do things like that to sustain yourself after uh, the initial, the hard times, basically. As you may know, uh, I not only run the Survivalist Prepper website, but Brian Duff and Ryan Mitchell and I have teamed up to create the Preparedness Experience Conference and website. Uh, over at the Preparedness Experience, uh, we put together a great PDF that goes into more detail about everything that I talked about in this video. 
as well as some myths about EMPs, uh, the effects of an EMP versus what a CME would do, information about Faraday cages, and the aftermath of an EMP like I was just talking about. Uh, if you're watching this video on YouTube, just click the link in the description below to get the PDF. Uh, if you're watching at the website or somewhere else, uh, just use the link provided and it'll take you to that free download. Also on that PDF download page, I also added some great resources about preparing for an EMP. Uh, we did an interview with Chris Weathersman. Some of you may know him as Angry American, the author of the Going Home series. Uh, we did an interview with Matthew Stein, author of When Technology Fails. And I also did a two-part interview with Matthew on the Survivalist Prepper podcast about the effects of an EMP. I'll make sure and add all of that stuff on the downloads page there. Uh, we put this together to help people who know very little about EMPs, but also people who have researched this subject for a while and, and kind of know the ins and outs of it. But there's always something you learn about any, any subject the more you research it. So wherever you fall on that scale, you'll definitely get something out of this. Uh, like I said, just click the link below or next to the video uh, and get all of those free downloads. If you do have any questions, comments, or anything like that, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment below the video. Uh, if you're watching it at the website, you can send me an email. E me, Ryan, or Brian, send us an email and we can answer your questions. Uh, but that's it, and I appreciate it, everyone. We'll talk to you later.